hey guys, how's it going? It's Jamie, your crafty DIY guy. I am back and I am super excited to bring you another set of DIY projects. Um, before I get into the projects though, I do want to say thank you to all of my subscribers. I appreciate you guys so much, especially those OGs that have been around for a long time. If you're one of my newer subscribers, thank you also. And of course, welcome if I haven't had the opportunity yet to say Welcome to you personally. Um, if you are checking out the channel for the first time or maybe you just kind of stumbled upon it, maybe you'll hit that subscribe button and uh, we'll become new friends. Now, today's video I am super, super excited about because it is a collaboration with a woman that I love and respect so much. Her name is Jerry Ann Henson. Now, if you know Jerry Ann's channel, then you know Jerry Ann is all about fun and just being real. And she has been such an inspiration to me from the moment I started my YouTube channel. She's offered me advice. She's offered me little tips and tricks. She's told me like what software she uses. I love her so much. And her husband, Jim, is also equally as amazing. Now, today's video is a collaboration, so be sure to check out Jerry Ann's video. I've got it linked in the description below. Also, I'm going to link her Instagram and her YouTube channel as well, so you can subscribe to her if you're not already not. So, here is a look at her channel information, and then we're going to jump right into the projects. As you can see, Jerry Ann Henson's page is filled with all kinds of great content. She has shopping hauls, she has cooking, she has subscriber mail. She literally has a little bit of everything on her YouTube channel. Also, her Instagram channel is equally as wonderful. She has a lot of great content, and you can also get a look into her personal life this way as well. And our first project today is from William Sonoma Home. We are going to recreate this vase for less than $2 with Dollar Tree supplies. I took one of these rounded vases with the flat top from Dollar Tree. Also a four pack of these glass bowls that I picked up the last time I went to Dollar Tree, which was about three months ago. It feels like it anyway. <laughs> if by chance you can't find these materials or you don't have them on hand, you can use one of these small skinnier vases as well as these plastic serving kind of like uh, dessert cups that you can get at Dollar Tree. And then for my paint, I just use this Rust-Oleum two times the coverage ultra white matte spray paint. I just simply took my super glue gel that I also grabbed at Dollar Tree and just used um, a generous amount across the top and then just glued the small glass bowl on top kind of like this. I waited a couple hours for it to dry and then I took it outside and gave everything a nice um, coat of spray paint. I would say I probably did about three coats of light spray paint on this. That way I got nice even coverage and this is what it looks like when it's on the mantle. You could certainly leave it just like this and it's gorgeous. You could also add a candle to the top or you could group it together with some other vases and flowers like I've done here. I really love the way this looks and I'm going to keep this one for myself. Hey guys, you got a little bit of a sneak peek for this project, but you're going to grab some of these uh, rub-on transfer letters from Dollar Tree. Also, some of this twine, one of these cutouts um, that's in the shape of a cross, and then some wood beads. I purchased mine at Amazon. If you don't have any plain wood beads, you could use Dollar Tree beads and then just paint them. Um, I will put a link below to mine. And then this is my Craft Smart Antiquing uh, wax that I also used on this project. I took all of my beads and just put them on a skewer. I usually do this whenever I'm working with beads that I have to paint. It just makes things a lot easier. And literally, I just kind of put them in the pattern that I thought I would like the best for my tassel. Um, I did it in too large, too small, too large, too small. And then uh, I always dab a little bit of hot glue on each end of my skewer. That helps keep those beads on that skewer while I'm painting and uh, prevents them from flying across the room, which has happened more than one occasion. Then I take some of my antiquing wax and just rub them literally up and down on the beads until I get the coverage that I need. I will do a usually a pretty heavy coat on them and then also will take my rag and you'll see I'll start to wipe away some of that antiquing wax as I'm going through this process. And uh, that is just really kind of my technique for this kind of aged wood look that I'm going for. And then I also repeated the process on the cross itself. 
The next thing I did was take some scotch tape and just wrap it around the end of my twine. I wanted to do this because it actually makes threading those beads a lot easier. I took my skewer and just cut the edge off where I had hot glued it and then started pulling the beads off of the skewer and threading it right onto the twine. I did this one by one until both of my skewers were completely threaded onto the twine and just tied the end onto the cross itself. I made sure that the knot for the twine was at the top of the cross and then after that was done I just pushed all of those beads down to where they were tightly sitting right on top of the cross and then I took the other side of my twine, cut it and created a tassel. When I do this I just take a lot of twine and just wrap it around my fingers kind of like you're seeing here. Um, I do this until it gets to about the thickness that I want. I tend to like my my tassels to be a little a little beefy I guess you'd say. <laughs> and then I took the end of my twine there and as you can see snipped off a little piece tied it just at the end to help keep it together. And I did this kind of in a loose knot. And then I spread out the um, kind of the, the loop or the circle, hopefully this is making sense, and just kind of fluff the end of it there and cut it. That way it would be um, kind of uh, tassel-y looking. <laughs> and then I wanted to tie off that centerpiece to kind of give me that tassel. And so I just proceeded to wrap twine around the um, kind of the top half there until I got it to a size and thickness that I like. And then uh, after I did that, I was able to tie that off and then snip off the ends of that. And I did put just a little dab of hot glue just to hold that knot together and to make sure that it was good and solid. And then when I was done kind of creating my tassel, I just literally tied it on to the end of the rope. And uh, that was it. And then I took a leftover peanut container. This is a plastic peanut container. I spray painted it white and then tied my tassel to the top of it. And I love the way this looks. And for my last project today, we're going to be doing another dupe. This one is this shell wind chime from Pier One. And for my last project, this is a Pier One dupe. I took one of these wooden dowel rods. I also took about 16 of these seashells that I grabbed at Dollar Tree the last time I was there, some fishing line that I had in my toolbox, and then also some of these wood or golden beads rather. These are gold hair beads that I grabbed at Dollar Tree. And then uh, I just started to string each one of those rows of shells onto the fishing line. I wanted the golden beads to be on there to add a little bit of color and a little bit of texture. So I ended up kind of uh, tying the beads at various lengths along the actual um, fishing line itself and then gluing the seashells directly down to the fishing line. And then after everything was done, I was able to tie off each one of those uh, kind of individual strands of shells and beads to the top of my dowel rod. I did spray paint this with an antique gold color uh, before I did this and then of course let it dry. Fishing line is pretty hard to work with, especially when you wear bifocals. It's very hard to see. And so I had a little bit of trouble getting these tied off, but once, uh, once I kind of figured it out and honestly put the camera away, I was able to tie all of these strands onto my uh, wooden dowel rod and then I also just grabbed a piece of Dollar Tree twine and uh, hung it or used it as a hanger on the top of the dowel rod as well. Which gave me this lovely effect. I really love the way this looks and I love the way it sounds when these are clanging together. I'm super super happy with this one as well. Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please remember to give me a thumbs up and remember to subscribe to my channel. Also a very special shout out and thank you to Jerry Ann, my buddy. Please be sure to check out her collaboration below. It is linked in the description box. Also stay safe everyone and thank you again.